How you doing guys and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I am a social media marketer and online coach. And in this video, I wanna explain why I think social media marketing, also known as SMA, was and still is the best business model to get into when you're just starting out and you want to earn money online and get into the online entrepreneurial space. So this is a very off the cuff video to be fair. Um, it's not planned, there is no script to it. It's very off the cuff. I'm just gonna basically try and create a structure as I go along. Um, I wanna basically explain how I got started, why now is probably easier to get started as well. The journey so far, and uh, like I said, I'll wrap it up by giving you guys some quick tips and explaining why, uh, like I said, you know, 2021 going into 2022, social media marketing is as easy as it has ever been and if you are new to the whole online entrepreneurship space you want to start making money online then this is a very very good business model to get into so let's just start at the start and like i said we'll just work our way uh, through the journey when i started out this was 2000 the end of 2016 the start of 2017 so uh, very very early days I was just finishing in uni. Um, I have my bachelor's in business and I was getting to the end of my um, uni degree. I only had my thesis left and I was just thinking, okay, what, what is the next step for me? What am I going to do after this? A few years prior to that, I, done, I had a gap year and I'd done some office work for my granddad's uh, recruitment agency. I worked there for a full year and the one thing that that the whole year taught me was that that was not something that I wanted to do. I did not want to work in an office job. It was very tedious. It was the same hours every single week, the same jokes every single week, the same tasks every single week. It's like I was reliving that same week over and over again. And what for, you know, for what the equivalent is of a full-time wage, you know, it's at the time it was great money. Loved it the first few months that I was there, you know, because it was during the summer months, basically after the end of, um, what well, what is it, high school, basically, you know, for for those of you that in the US are watching, uh, before I think it's high school anyway, before you go into college and university, whatever that is. Um, so I finished that for the summer, graduated, etc., and then I had all the summer months where I worked uh, an office job. And it was great, you know, I used to come home, uh, I'll finish at five, be home for like half past five, it was still sunny, it was still light out, I could go to the gym, all that lot. Um, and like I said, it was just an office job, it felt professional, it felt like I was making a step in the right direction in terms of my career. Um, and th at times there was even um, thought in my mind that, that that was it, you know, I, I was going to do that full time, I wasn't even going to go to uni, I wasn't even going to do uh, my bachelor's in business, etc. But then as the months went on, um, you know, it got to the winter months, it got to October, November, it was getting dark outside. I was going to work in the dark, I was coming back in the dark. Um, all my daylight hours were spent in the office, so I didn't really see daylight. And it got to a certain point in like December, January, when I realized like I haven't seen daylight like for like five days, you know, back to back, it was Monday to Friday, obviously I was, I was in the office and it was only the weekend that you know, I was out during the day when it was light. And that was a really depressing moment. Um, like I said, financially it was good at the time. You know, I was I was still young. Um, I think it was like 18, 19 at the time. You know, it was good money. The hours weren't extremely long or anything like that. It was just tedious. I, I was thinking to myself, you know, is this it? Is this all that I'm gonna get out of life? Is this, you know, have I now sort of achieved the peak of my, my career? Uh, so to speak and once I sort of realized okay like this whole business th th this business stuff is not for me to sit in the office um, you know working for someone else etc it wasn't necessarily all of that right it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to become an entrepreneur I just wanted more onto life you know I was watching YouTube videos um, from YouTube channels there's a YouTube channel called high on life I'm not even sure if it still exists basically a group of guys that were traveling as their business and they were documenting their journey on YouTube and they were basically getting, you know, they were earning money, no idea how, like I said, I haven't watched these guys in years, but they were in, that was their full-time job, becoming a YouTuber. Now, back then I was very, very introverted, so I wouldn't dream of doing anything YouTube related, anything I've put myself out there. 
I hated social media with a passion. You know, it just wasn't me. It wasn't in my nature to 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 post anything on social media. More because you know I was um, not necessarily afraid, but I just didn't want people to comment like, "Oh, why did you post that on social media?" or "Look, are you posting this on social media, etc." I wanted to avoid that, so um, I wasn't really active on social media. But I did very much envy these guys that were you know basically traveling full time as you know as their job. You know, being able to do that uh, day in day out and living life on their own terms that you know just amazed me. Then, like I said, I went to uni, um, decided to leave that gap year as just the one year, go to university, have a bachelor's in business, slowly started to look into the possibilities, you know, of what's possible, what's out there. You know, your regular stuff, you Google how to earn money online. I very much liked to be at home. You know, like I said, I'm quite introverted. I still am. Um, I'd love to have something where I could work from my laptop. There was even a time for like a month where I did online translating because I'm bilingual, so I'm fluent in both Dutch as well as English. Um, and there was even a time for like a, a small month, you know, it ended up being extremely bad pay. It was like five cents a word or something like that. Um, and the, the, the doc, like, it sounds good, right? You know, translating stuff from Dutch to English and vice versa. But the documents that I had to translate, like, like on like the different types of, um like butterflies and stuff like that like very very specific very boring very dry information that i had to translate so i ended up leaving that after a month um i sold my homework so i used to create summaries of my books my course lectures etc i used to create summaries of that sell that online that would equate to about let's say three four hundred a month on like a in like a test period outside of test periods it would be you know non-existent maybe five euros here and there but that was about it. So I very much like that aspect of earning money online, but I was just, you know, the information was non-existent or hard to access, or like I said, it was behind a paywall, which I didn't trust it and so on and so forth. And then in 2017, my uh, granddad died, you know, as you guys all know from like the very first video I post on YouTube, um, like the introduction to my channel, I explained that, you know, that had a very big impact on me and the way I thought, etc. because it made me think about myself and how I was living life. My granddad was someone who very much lived life on his own terms. Um, he basically did what he wanted and he became very successful by, you know, basically being the man he is or was. And I started to look at that and compare how I was acting and, you know, how my life was at the time. And I thought, okay, I need to change this up. I actually need to start becoming... Um, not necessarily more extroverted, but just start doing more things that I want to do rather than uh, thinking about the backlash of society. You know, what are people going to say if I do X, Y, and Z? So uh, what, at that point, I started an Instagram page, which, you know, it's obviously not, but at the time, that was a very big step mentally for me. Um, I started documenting my journey, my fitness journey, started posting, um, you know, fitness-related content, um, and then that slowly started my first online business called JD Fitness, where I gave people uh, basically fitness related coaching, you know, health advice, nutrition advice, etc., which is good. Um, just my knowledge was, you know, very, uh, my knowledge on fitness and nutrition was, you know, was good. It was definitely uh, at a sufficient stage where I could coach people, but my knowledge on how to market that was very minimal. So at the time it was good, but it just wasn't enough to actually build a full time job out of it. Um, but I did very much enjoy it. So that sort of sparked the idea of, okay, I like the content side, you know, now that I'm over that mental hurdle of posting content online, you know, I very much enjoy it. I like recording YouTube videos, but how can I now use that and build an online business? And then I went from fitness coaching to content creation. So I started creating promotional videos, um, for just local businesses, local companies, you know, people that um, reach out to me or vice versa, that I reach out to them to see if they needed help or anything. Um, created, created like these small two minute promotional videos, like a minute long. Um, and that was inspired by a guy called Isaac Marley, who was an Australian uh, content creator, now social media marketer. And he was a guy that I used to follow religious, religiously back in the day because he posted fitness content and he made the transition to uh, content creation. So it was very relatable, even though this guy was a complete other side of the world, it was very relatable to see what he was doing. And um, back then I was still Googling, you know, how to earn money online, how can I uh, build an online business? And 
basically just see, you know, what is it, what is possible? You know, people are earning money online, but how are they doing it? And back then, this is 2017, Tai Lopez was still, you know, top of the game. He was the go-to online guru. And obviously, you know, a lot of people said he was a scammer, this and that. But the content that I watched of Tai Lopez was actually very viable. I actually really enjoyed watching him and listening to him. So uh, I had around like six, 700 euros saved up at the time. Um, around this time, I was also um, working at a local gym. So I had my online coaching money and I was also working as a fitness instructor at my local gym. Um, I bought a camera, bought some, you know, basically equipment for the content creation, but I still had like six, 700 euros saved up to, um, you know, to basically spend on self-investment, self-education. So I ended up buying Ty Lopez's social media marketing course. And back then it was like mind blowing, right? Like, oh my God, like this is all possible. You know, a Facebook pixel is tracking what people are doing online. Like it was all like really mind blowing stuff. Um, and at the time that was very, very helpful to me as well. And I realized self-education or investing into, you know, online courses and coaching is actually very viable. I, the, the things that I was taught and I learned in that Ty Lopez course was content that I would never be able to find online. This is back in the day, right? This is back when social media marketing was still in its infancy. No one really did it. No one really heard about it. Um, but you know, there's this guy, Ty Lopez from America, who was explaining that this is all possible and this is going to become a very big thing. So that is that sparked the idea of okay, I need to start doing this and you know start trying to implement all of this in the Netherlands. But back then, it was so difficult to convince someone to you know that social media itself was something that you could get a return on investment on. So now, 2021, you're know, going into 2022 it's common, right? Like people understand the power and the value of social media. But back then, that wasn't the case. You know, Facebook was only just brought out the, the ad platform, like social media, um, Facebook and Instagram were still separated. Facebook was still a content platform that was slowly dying out. You know, the, the, the community slowly shifted from Facebook to Instagram. Instagram did not have the algorithm. It was all still in chronological order, etc. Um, so, you know, social media wasn't really seen as this proven concept and for something to actually generate a direct ROI from. And especially in the Netherlands, you know, the whole, um, the, like the way people are in the Netherlands, it's very much not necessarily skeptical, but they want to see it to believe it. You know, it's, it's very hard to convince a businessman from the Netherlands. It's not as much now, but back then it really was to convince a businessman from the Netherlands that social media is going to be the next big thing and this is what you need to invest into. So it was difficult. And back then I wasn't very much aware of e-commerce, online businesses and online web shops. So I was going after your local hotels, your local restaurants, your local barber shops, etc. And then basically saying, listen, you know, if I take over your social media, um, you will generate more followers, more followers can equate to more customers. And then I'll say, listen, I'm going to charge you a thousand euros for this because that is what Ty Lopez taught us, that it's worth that much. And maybe in America, you know, it's easy to convince someone to, and again, I'm talking about like 2017, 2018, right? And now it's, it's very common. People understand it. And it's also very easy for me to show people the direct ROI. But back then, you know, Ty Lopez was showing people um, or showing case studies from people in America charging a thousand to a local restaurant and being able to generate them more customers and more sales and more reservations. And I'm sort of trying to copy that in the Netherlands and it just was not happening. So it was very, very difficult back then. And then on YouTube, the content was non-existent. Like I said, you had Isaac Marley um, that was uh, posting content on uh, you know how he's doing it in Australia. Who else did you have back then? Bradley Riley, you know, who is uh, my old business partner as well. He was posting content on this. Um, the, the likes of Jordan Platt and Iman Gadji, you know, they were just starting out as well. So content again was very, very minimum. So you had all these, um, you know, all these people in America that were doing it, but in Europe, it was just much more difficult to convince people that, you know, that is the way it's going to go. Um, and then if you fast forward to now, you know, content is everywhere. Like the, the information that I got, out of that online course from Ty Lopez is just available now on the internet for free. You know, if you, I think my free content on YouTube is probably more valuable than the content in that course. And there's a lot of other, you know, social media marketing YouTubers 
that are giving out just as valuable content as well. So now, yes, there are a lot of people that are already starting an agency, but I think now it's probably easier, the easiest it's, it's ever been to start a social media marketing agency. And back then, you know, obviously dropshipping has been around for a while. Amazon FBA has been around for a while. You've got the Dutch equivalent to that called Bold.com, uh, which is like the Dutch Amazon. Um, you know, that's been around for a while. And back then, I'd say it probably hit and miss. You know, um, dropshipping was easier back then. You know, because Facebook was not as strict with its policies. Um, and you know, you basically you were your your own client, right? You ran your own ads, etc. Um, and the policies were in a strict with Facebook so you could get away with more. Not everyone was aware of AliExpress, etc. So dropshipping was much, much easier back then. And probably with the ease of dropshipping, the ease of Amazon FBA and the difficulty of convincing uh, people to you know, take your agency service on, it'd probably be hit and miss, right? Between you know, what is the best business model to go for. The only big downside of dropshipping is you need to invest into Facebook ads. Uh, the big downside of Amazon FBA and Ball is that you need to invest into stock. So the social media marketing agency business model was the only one with a low barrier to entry. So everyone could try it. And maybe the, down, maybe the downside is that the barrier to entry was so low that people could start without skin in the game and also quit fairly quickly when they realized they actually need to put in effort. Whereas if you're investing into stock for your Amazon FBA business, you're committed, right? You've got skin in the game, you've invested money into this, so maybe you will try harder to actually get a return on that. Whereas with social media marketing, you know, you give it a go, it doesn't work, you don't get a client within two days, so you give it up and you, you try something else, right? Um, so if you look at now, I'd probably say that social media marketing is easier than back then. And I think the other business models are probably more difficult because dropshipping now, everyone understands how AliExpress works, how Alibaba works, etc. You know, people are very, very skeptical now when they buy products online. They, you can sell a dropshipping store a mile off. It's still possible. You know, there's still a lot of people making a lot of money with dropshipping. But when you look, like I'm just saying, if I see a product online that looks good, I'll check AliExpress first to see if I can't find that on AliExpress. And then, you know, comparing the price in AliExpress and Alibaba and Sunsky and all these dropship, um, you know, where, warehouse stores on, online, I'll compare, compare that price and the waiting time to the store that I've just found and then see, you know, is it actually worth me getting it on the store with um, two-day delivery or should I just wait three weeks and get it via AliExpress for a tenth of the price? You know, so now it's much difficult, much more difficult to find a winning product. It's much more difficult to run the ads as well because there's a lot of different policies, etc., that Facebook, you know, have now implemented because of all of the issues that are surrounding iOS 40, you know, the reputation that Facebook have got, etc. And the same goes for Amazon FBA, right, and Bold.com, etc. You know, if, if you now want to try and find yourself a winning product, it's going to be very, very difficult because all of the products that are already successful, that are already working, are already on those platforms. And I've also heard a few people say that they had a very successful product in the past and Amazon have just created their own variation of it or bought the common created their own variation of it. Um, and they've just basically just put your uh, page or your product that was on page one, you know, on page like two or something like that and have the Amazon original one on page one. So you're very dependent on how Amazon reacts to your products, etc. And like I said, there's just so many products already out there, it's very difficult to find a unique one. Whereas social media marketing has probably now gotten even more easy because there's more content available. You know, you've got my channel, you've got other people's channels, there's coaching programs, there's courses, etc. on social media marketing. There's new software that are making it easy as well. Like back in the day when I started, there wasn't even Loom. Loom didn't exist, Pandadoc didn't exist. You know, what else have you got? Like simple invoices didn't exist, Slack didn't exist. This is all, this is all, these have been like, uh, you know, software and progressions that have been made the last few years that were not there when I started. So now communication can be easily streamlined via Slack. Simple invoices, Pandadoc, etc. you know, it's a very easy way of sending invoices, sending contracts over, um, you've got email automation software, etc. You know, there's so much 
um, different, you know, there's so many different types of softwares now that make having an agency much, much easier. ClickFunnels is now obviously much bigger than it once was. You know, back then it was still very, very slow. It was in its infancy, etc. Um, so even ClickFunnels now is top of the game. You've got stuff like Go High Level, things to make agency life so much easier. But also the market is used to social media marketing now. People understand the need for paid traffic and Facebook ads and the the necessity of having a social media presence for online businesses. You know, even even e-commerce back then. You know, uh, for people to order online, it was done, but it wasn't done as much as it is now. You know, e-commerce now is top of the game. I think I'm not going get to get up the numbers because I don't know what the actual numbers are. But if I look at myself, I'd say 90% of my purchases are done online. Um, and, you know, that is the same for a lot of people, you know, especially because of the whole coronavirus where no one was allowed out. Everyone was ordering online and e-commerce just spiked and it hasn't you know plummeted since it's just been the same ever since so software wise agency building wise it's easier there's much more information out there to get started and the market is now used to it so that is why social media marketing now is probably the best business model to get into and the great thing about it is you can charge what is relatively high ticket for someone that is just starting out, right? So if you look at, you know, an average wage, let's say that's 2,000 a month, it depends where you're from, you know, it's 2,000 a month in New York might not be as much as 2,000 a month in the Netherlands, for example, but, you know, 2,000, let's just take that as the average, that is the equivalent of one or two clients depending on your retainer. So the average retainer is around 1,000, um, you know, some people will up that to 1,500, um, you know, I've also got a few retainers that are 2.5K, 3K, etc. Um, or you've got rev share deals, percentages of ad spend, all that lot. But just to keep things simple, let's say the retainer is a thousand a month. You only need two clients to replace your full time income. And I did the exact same. You know, I was working um, part time as a gym instructor. I had my online coaching business that was slowly dying out. I did a bit of content creation on the side. Um, I think I worked out, I had like 1600 euros in monthly recurring income, you know, including my wage. It's monthly recurring income sounds good, but like this is me working like full time for this. So sixteen hundred. So that is all I needed to replace my full time income, which was back then I was charging like six hundred a month for social media management, which is posting on other people's socials, etc. Uh, I was charging six hundred a month for that. So let's say three or four clients, and I had replaced that. Um, and then back then I also got, uh, which for me was my biggest client to date, I got a like fitness coach and brand um, for a thousand euros a month. So a thousand euros a month for one client and I had um, two or three, you know, social media management clients on. So I'd replace my full time income and then as soon as I had the opportunity to, I quit my job as a fitness instructor. Um, I did the content creation for a little while after that, but I also sacked it off pretty quickly when I realized um, that, you know, I was putting in a lot of time and effort into these videos, but I was only getting a hundred euros back for them per video. And then the online coaching just slowly died out as well. Fitness coaching that is. Um, so, you know, I very quickly was able to replace my full-time income once I actually went all in on social media marketing. You know, there was a, a while, I'd say about six months where I was just, you know, messing about, you know, I was creating a website, getting the logos created. I got like business cards, um, you know, created and sent over to my house, etc. And that went on for about five, six months because I didn't really know what I had to do. I didn't really know, you know, um, how to set it all up. I just thought, okay, well, I need a website to look professional. I didn't understand that that wasn't necessarily uh, a necessity, especially not back then. Nowadays, I would recommend it because, you know, it is a way for you to stand out from the rest. But you know, it's it's not necessarily needed to have your own website because you're using their ad accounts, their business manager, their socials and their website to set everything up. Yours is just there as like your business card, right? Um, so anyway, I spent a few months doing all of that and then realized that I didn't really need all of this. And, um, you know, once I actually went all in, I started, you know, really going all in on the outreach and making sure that I was getting meetings in left, right and center. I started using freelancer websites like Upwork, People Per Hour. Uh, what else did you have? Like, 
guru.com I think or something like that I started using those freelancer websites and that is when I got my big break that is when I started you know getting in clients and that is when I was able to quit my job so um, that is basically you know how my journey went in a nutshell and that is why I recommend anyone that is looking into online entrepreneurship to look into social media marketing because the, the, the hardest client is the first one mentally because you need to understand the value that you are providing. And that's very difficult. You know, if you're working a nine to five job or you've got everyone around you working a nine to five job or that is what you are taught, then you compare your, uh, your hourly wage to what is possible with social media marketing, right? So it'll be very difficult for you to convince someone to, to, to pay you a thousand a month when you know that, okay, to set up an ad, it only takes 20 minutes, not even that. You know, so you're gonna think, why is this person gonna spend a thousand a month on me when I'm only gonna be working on the account like 20 minutes max, you know, maybe a week, something like that. You know, sometimes it'll take a bit longer, of course, but you know, that is how you're gonna think. You're gonna compare a thousand euros to the amount of hours that you should be working uh, for that, or at least you know that is what you've been taught to do. And that is not the case because it's value-based pricing. So you're getting paid for the value you provide. The value you provide is the money you make for the client. It doesn't matter to the client if you spend 10 hours on their account or 20 minutes on their account, if they get a return on investment, which you know if you set up the ads correctly, they will do, then you are worth that money. So just think to yourself, if that client makes 10,000 extra, am I okay to charge 2,000 for that? He's still profiting 8,000 a month from that campaign that you set up. So that is how you need to think because that is value-based pricing. So you need to sort of forget the fact that, you know, the hourly wage is 10 euros or 15 euros. I have no idea what that is anymore. Um, you know, you need to forget about that because that is not how we calculate the worth of our service. And once you get over that barrier, once you understand that, it's not about the hourly wage, it's not about the time you put in, you will have so much freedom because you know that it's no longer based on the hours you spend behind the computer or the hours that you work. And when you think about it as well, if you work a full-time job or if you work eight hours a day, how many hours of those eight hours are you actually productive? And when you are um, you're your, own, you're your own boss, when you are an agency owner, you will play into that. You'll know, okay, well, I'm very productive for the first three hours of the day. After that, I'm no longer productive until like 7 p.m. at night or something like that. So you can play into that. You can work for three hours a day, set up all the campaigns for your clients, do all the outreach, do all the meetings, etc., and then you can chill, do whatever you want to do, and then 7 p.m. you can check in, check the accounts, etc., and make sure that everything is still set up correctly and everything is still generating a profit for the clients. And with that, you'll have so much more time to live life on your own terms. You'll have so much more time to invest into self-development, to look into what it is that you actually wanna do. You know, Do you wanna pursue this whole online entrepreneur thing? Do you actually wanna have an agency or do you wanna do something else entirely? You'll have that time to do so because you're off the hamster wheel, you're, you're out of the rat race. You've got, you've got money coming in for a relatively um, small time out of your day and then you've got the rest of the day to do what it is that you want to do so hopefully I've got my point across with this video it is a bit of a ranty video I understand that uh, for those of you that have made it to the end of this video you know shout out to you guys that is uh, very much appreciative I really do uh, appreciate that you guys take the time to watch these videos if there is content that you'd like to see from me, uh, please just leave a comment down below. You know, any suggestions I will record, I will make, um, obviously within reason, you know, if it's something that is very, very in-depth that is already discussed in my paid courses, then obviously you know, I will refer you guys on to that. But even then, you know, it, it, the courses, the coaching, etc., will always generate you return on investment. Like I said with me, you know, content that I invest into or coaches that I've invested into have always generated me a return on investment. It's always about the skin in the game and the action that you take. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you've got something out of it. Comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.